synchronization of, uh, of epidemic oscillations induced by social network control. The supervisors were uh, Daniel De Martino and Fabio Cacioli. So please, uh, Luis, if you're going to start, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, actually, I will, I will let the girls start. Well, lucky me, are you there? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah, yeah good, good day. Time. Thank you for this privilege and opportunity yeah. to be here with you. Say thank you. We Project 16 are here to present a project titled Synchronization of Epidemic Oscillation Induced by Social Network. And we are being supervised by Daniel and Fabio. We'll be guided by the following outline. Pass. Yeah. Mathematics being the universal language of nature and uh, the foundation of all the natural sciences and engineering has historically been used to gain realistic insights into the transition dynamics and control of emerging and re-emerging infectious disease. And this is of public interest. Fred and Carlos, 2001, and Anderson and May, 1991, divine epidemiology to be the study and analysis of the distribution, determinants, and control of health and disease condition in the divine population. And this has been a cornerstone of public health research since the 19th century. Epidemic model generally assumes that the population can be divided into different classes or compartments. This depends on the stages of disease, according to Adamson and May 1992. Yeah. One of the simplest two-state compartmentalization in the epidemic model is the SIR model and the SIS model. In the SIR model, we have the susceptible population, the infected class, and the recovery class. This is a way where the, the susceptible class being interact with the rate uh, interact with the infected class, then the rate at which the infected class recover from a particular infection. And here in the equation two, we have our beta, which is the transmission rate. We call it transmission rate is uh, the rate at which the susceptible is being infected with a particular disease. Then we have the gamma here to be the recovery rate, the rate at, this, at which the infected class being recovered from a particular disease, which is in equation three. Equation three. Then here we have our, in equation four, from the equation three and two, we have a reproduction number to be beta over gamma. The reproduction number generally is the, is the number is the production number is the average number of secondary infections which caused by an infection individual during his or entire period of infectiousness. Then here, we, if we have our reproduction number to be greater than one, that means we have an endemic state. Biologically, this means that if reproduction is greater than one, the infection will persist. That means each newly infected individual we spread the disease to at least one susceptible individual on average. And conversely, if we have reproduction number to be less than one, then there is an epidemic, the disease can still be managed. I mean, on average, an infected individual will spread the infected to at least less than one infected, I mean, individual at the period of the infected state. Then I will allow my next presenter, Olaju Mokeoludo, to take us through the networking, the model fitting, and the, the epidemic case stereotype. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my presenter. Hello. Go ahead. Yeah, yes, please go ahead. We'll listen to you. Thank you. The infection rate on networks, we have the infection rate on this model depends on social network, on the physical or social network. That is, R0 is equal to beta over gamma over, multiplied by the k square over k, where k is the probability of choosing a random mode with k connections. From figure two, we can see example of two different net networks. We expect an epidemic to spread 
faster on the right network. Why? Because they are closely knitted. You can see the network on the figure, as in the, note, the nodes are closely knitted in the right hand figure on figure two. So that means that by controlling, the key here is by controlling the connectivity of the network, one can also control the spreading of the infection. Once the connectivity of the net of the infection is, 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 being, uh, is being controlled, then the spread of the disease can be controlled. Epidemic oxidation induced by feedback. Epidemic models in networks with feedback. They have the infection states to the network structure. From figure three, this is an example of a, a friendship net, a school of friendship network by March 2015. From the figure, we can see at figure A, you can see that the nodes are closely related. So that means that the infection can spread faster because of the network. The nodes that are jam packed, they are closing it, so infection can spread faster. And when the nodes begin to split, you can see from the deep part, when the nodes begin to split, you can see that the rate of transmission reduces. And the C part, they are, the nodes are, they are discarded, they are not, they are disjointed. That means at the C point, the, the infection rate reduces. And at the D point, you can see that they are totally dispersed. That shows that once they are, and once the network can be controlled, that means when we, we simulate lockdown, the idea is just to stimulate, when there's no relationship, when there's no interaction between people, the infection cannot be spread properly. In this figure, we have the uh, figure four, we have feedback control impact on an SIR model. On the left, you can see that there's no feedback, uh, no feedback model. So just have, there's no control, there's no control, but there's no oscillation. But on the right, you can see that we have three oscillations on the, on the plot, on the figure on the right. That means that the, these are oscillations, and this shows that if there's a close past or there's a trajectory. Once we have a trajectory, that means that when our loss is less than one, when there's a trajectory, you can see that there's a limit circle. There's a, this is an epidemic wave from the region of, this is an epidemic wave. When there's a trajectory, then it can be fitted. This can make, it can be fitted into real data. It shows them, once you have seen the margins of a trajectory, then they show that it can be fitted in real data. Next, please. So now that we are treating oscillators, are these oxidators really coupled? Is there any type of synchronization between those oxidations that we have shown? What are the relationship between the oxidation? What is the synchronization between them? That is the main reason for this research. So we are going to, for the phase reconstruction, we are going to use the EOVA transform. transform. That is, for example, in the, the yeah, figure six, Y of T equals to H bar of F of T, that's the formula we're going to use. We're going to look at the data. We're going to extract the face for each country and we're going to uh, compare. The figure six shows the example of EBAT, like uh, the IHA EBAT transfer embedded from a periodically given struct landing oscillator. This is done by General um, Pivoski 2020. If trajectories are closed, the face can tell us that it has different oscillators and are synchronized and know exactly where and where, the, where their trajectory are going to be. So the idea behind this is to find the trajectory and know how to synchronize if they are any. So I'll leave the room for my next presenter to continue from there. Yeah, so thanks so much, Moki. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, the girls briefly introduced you to the background that we are working at, and now I'm gonna present you the what we have actually done. So our first task was to extract daily deaths from a raw file containing data sets of, state, of the state of the COVID-19 outbreak for countries in the world. We can see on figure seven left panel, an example of data we are working with. In purple, we have our purple, our signal, e.g. daily deaths over the course of the pandemics on the country of Ghana as, as example. On the same panel, Green dots represent the signal related Hilbert transform obtained from directly applying equation six, previously represented by Olaj Moki. This Hilbert transform directly here. So when you look at phase space of these two variables, at y as a function of x, we can indeed see that this seems to approach a closed trajectory on the phase space. And this, is, this result is important. So I'll just take a few more moments on this slide to explain this a little further. 
So Lajmuke sp spent her last couple of slides convincing you that both the proposed model by Daniela and Fabio and the COVID-19 epidemic data seems to perform a closer trajectory on the phase space. This is important because now we can treat each country as dots in this phase space, each of which running on its own closed trajectory. So these trajectories are not necessarily the same. I mean, they are not the same, but the, the countries are running on these trajectories and we'd like to know if these runners are somehow synchronized in this trajectory. And if, we, and if we found that this is a yes answer, then why this happens? So our next step is then to reconstruct the, reconstruct the phase from this signal by supposing that a point in this phase space can be written by a simple complex number. And then the phase will be simply given by equation seven. So going further, uh, we then want to compare these extracted phases for different countries. To do this, we define a distance between phases as in equation eight, where we integrate the modules of the difference between two phases over the time series. So from now on, we are working with countries in pairs. So here I have two signals that are different from this one. This is a spear signal, the daily depths over the, couple of the, over the days, and this is the extracted phase. So when you simply look at the, this phase on the left panel, we can see that these countries are more synchronized than on the right one. The wave seems to play a, a, a role on each other, and this seems to, to, to uh, the dynamic seems to be similar. So when, when we see countries that are more synchronized, we can see that this area in purple is much smaller than on the, on the right case. On the right case, the case of Ghana and Afghanistan, the waves are unsynchronized clearly, and the area in purple is larger. So now we have a measure of how unsynchronized these epidemic waves are. Right. So with this relation in mind, we want to build a synchronization matrix between the analyzed countries where elements of this matrix are given by exactly by equation eight. We expect then if this matrix have some kind of block structure or can be built in some kind of block structure, then there would be some relation or some synchronization between particular countries, not all, but between some particular countries. So this is our first attempt to build this matrix. On this first attempt, I tried to, to previously group the countries that I'm plotting. So the first eight countries are from South America, the middle four are from Africa, and the last eight countries are from Europe. So we then followed the previously discussed procedure to obtain the matrix that I showed to, to you here. So we can clearly see that there is a block structure that can be built. And more than this, we can see that topological structures seem to play a role on this, on this result. Right. Uh, also, we can see that this is more important in Europe and Africa than on South America, for example. So topological structure seems not to be the only thing that causes this synchronization to happen. So to understand this further, we extended our, our procedure to all 164 countries available to us. So left panel shows us the raw matrix where columns lines are organized alphabetically while the right panel shows our first attempt to clusterize the, this matrix, now using a, a cluster algorithm, right, uh, obviously. So when we look at this cluster, proposed clusters on the right panel on the world map, I mean, looking at each country or which cluster it is, we can see that this is not yet the, the optimal structure that we want. So this is an ongoing work that we intend to keep collaborating on. And we, extended this to our next, next objective. So our next objective is now to, to relate in some way this block structure with migration or connectivity between two populations. So we then propose a model to, to explain how like specific countries and not all of these countries are synchronized in more, some more than others and other less. So we suppose now that there are two previously independent networks each of each one with its, its own ongoing epidemic. Then at some point in time, you introduce connections between these two networks. So that at each time a node will try to contaminate its own network, it also has a smaller chance to infect some node of the adjacent population. So we simply make few connections between two previously unrelated networks. 
So one would expect that given enough time and connections, eventually this two, these epidemic waves would be some, somehow synchronized, right? So on a simple model like this, we have two clear limits, right? On a, a lower limit, uh, where there are no connectivity between two populations and leading to a system with two completely independent networks. And an upper limit, where the two networks become a single network with an average degree of connectivity equals to K internal. So this slide shows our, our results for the model proposed. Figure 11 shows the synthetical data generated, where, while left panel, the model for an average of zero connections between populations. Right panel shows us the same simulation, but now with an average of one connection between the populations. We can clearly see that they're, they're on the right panel, the waves are more synchronized than on the left one. So that area in purple that we were discussing would be much bigger on the left panel than on the right panel. And th this is expressed on figure 12, where we can see that the, the higher the average network interdegree, the lower the distance between phases that the, the measure that we proposed for the synchronization matrix. So uh, our model seems to bring to the table the mechanism behind the synchronization between two somehow connected populations, be it via migration, proximity, airflow, et cetera. This process is not, is not well understood yet. So just to conclude, we have so far elaborated a synchronization matrix for a worldwide data for the COVID epidemics, and also have shown that this matrix can be decomposed in a block structure. We also propose a mechanism for this synchronization via migration or connectivity between two populations. For the future, we intend to optimize the clustering algorithm so we can in some way minimize the distance between countries and then estimate the synchronization parameter for each group of synchronized countries. In this way, we'll be able to show that instead of, let's say, 164 independent epidemic waves, we could treat 10 independent epidemic waves in the world, which would be a nice result to, to present. So just yesterday, Daniela told, me, Daniela told me that we already have some preliminary results for optimized cluster. And perhaps if you have enough time and you want, he can tell us a little about them. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. This was an amazing experience to all of us. We want to thank everyone responsible for this school to happen and also our supervisors who are always helpful to us. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Luis Ola Yumoke and Oluwakemi. I hope I pronounced the, the names correctly for this uh, very uh, very interesting presentation and also the congratulations to you and to your supervisors we have time for for questions please as usual just directly unmute your microphones and go ahead please yeah i would have a question perhaps i'm go not a, i'm not an expert on signal processing altogether but i understand that uh, you have used the hilbert transform to extract the phase right exactly um, this looks interesting, and I haven't thought of the Hilbert transform at all. I mean, uh, I would have naively used probably a, a power spectrum uh, to check for periodicities. Um, and I'm wondering whether I'm on the wrong track here or what, what really the advantages are of using the Hilbert transform here, say, uh, compared to a power spectrum by which you could also extract periodicities from a signal. Yeah, perhaps it's just uh, one, of way, one way of treating the problem. Perhaps the, the, your approach may, may get similar results. I mean, we just wanted to, to find some kind of synchronization, uh, some measure to, 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 to sim estimate the synchronization. I mean, any, I, I, I believe that any other measure perhaps would be sufficient to do this. Maybe Daniel and Fabio want to complement my answer here. Yeah, I mean, one idea is that um, these are, uh, I mean, the model says this uh, can be nonlinear oscillators. So if you do the Fourier transform, usually is uh, something you use. Uh, and so the power spectrum use for linear uh, equations. So the Hilbert transform uh, for us is um, somehow uh, a way to reconstruct the derivative that for noise, when you have a noisy data, uh, so it's, uh, we are using it 
in it in a heuristic way, like uh, the reference we gave uh, to the Vygotsky article. Mm. Yeah, so, this one. Yeah, this is, uh, because the, the problem when you use uh, Hilbert transform with the nonlinear oscillators, the power spectrum, uh, it's, it's complicated. No, you get all this uh, bifurcation of peaks. <laughs> mm. So I, I think maybe the Hilbert transform is, uh, is better for nonlinear. Uh, mm. So nonlinear. it's a rather new technique within this context. I mean, uh, as you're referencing Arkady Pikovsky, who apparently has used it recently. So is this my understanding correct uh, that this is a new interesting technique? Uh, I mean, Hilbert transform has been around for a long time, I suppose, right? But to apply yeah. it in this particular context then appears to be rather recent, right? Well, I've never seen, yeah, maybe we are original, I think. Yes, no, I mean, the Hilbert transform, I've been using it, for instance, for um, Magneto and Cephalogram data. Mm -hmm. yeah, they are used in um, neuroscience, no? For instance, computational neuroscience. But the, the computational neuroscience, you have a lot of ways. You have uh, millions of them. Yeah, I mean, you record the uh, whole night of a subject or... Uh, even some minutes with the frequency of uh, hundreds of hertz. So here instead you have two, three <laughs> waves. So that's why we have also a model in which we can make a benchmark and the model with the model we can produce uh, all the waves we, we want. Especially, I mean, with the, at least with the model, the, the SIS. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, Daniel, and thank you, Daniel. By the way, ciao, Daniel. I hope you're fine over there. More questions, colleagues? No more questions. If so, shall we thank uh, shall we thank the speakers for this uh, very nice presentation? Thank you very much, guys. I think we are actually... Um, so let me stop the recording.